Hi, welcome to OpenLC Solutions. Today we're continuing with the 2014 Ordinary Level paper. I'm moving on to question 3, which is an algebra-based question. And in this question we're told to solve for x and we're given this equation. So the first thing you always have to do in these types of questions is distribute. And so we end up with this 2 multiplied by this 4, so that's 2 by 4. And then 2 gets multiplied by the minus 3x, so that is uh, plus 2 by minus 3x. Plus a 12 is equal to 7x. This is a, a minus 5 times the 2, so minus 5 by 2x. And the minus 5 gets multiplied by the minus 7 as well, so we get minus 5 by minus 7. Now we have to just clean it up a little bit, so we get 8 from that. This is a minus 6x, uh, plus 12 I'm keeping from the previous line. Then we have a 7x. We have a minus 5 times 2 is minus 10x. And lastly, a minus 5 times a minus 7 is going to be a plus 35. And I'm going to clean up a little bit more, so I have a minus 6x. Here I have a, an 8 and a 12, which is going to be plus 20. And here I've got 7x minus 10x, which is minus 3x, and a plus 35. Uh, next comes the actual proper algebra part of this, where I try and get x equal to something. Um, so I want to get all my x's on one side and all my numbers on the other side. I think the easiest way to do this is to try and get the x's on the right-hand side. So I'm going to add 6x to the left, and I'm going to add 6x to the right. You can also think of it as the minus 6 going across the equal sign, and so it changes to a plus 6. Uh, I also don't want the, the 35 here on the right-hand side, because that's where my x's are going to be, so I'm going to subtract 35 from there, and I'm going to subtract 35 from the left as well. And when I evaluate all that, I've got a minus 6x and a plus x, and I've designed it so that they cancel each other. And on the right-hand side as well, I've got a plus 35 and a minus 35, and they're, they're going to cancel each other out. And all I have left on the left is 20 minus 35, which is minus 15. And then on the right-hand side, I have a minus 3x plus a 6x, which should be plus 3x. And now this is what 3x is, but I only want one of them. So I have to divide by 3 to work out what is 1x. You can also think of it as the, the, the 3 in blue here going over the equal sign, changing from multiplication to division as it does so. Uh, so I end up with this is minus 5 is equal to x. This is always the kind of answer you're looking for when you see that the question is uh, solve for x. The answer to this question is always going to be x equals something. And that's what I ended up with here, so that's probably the question done. Part 2 asks us to verify our answer to part 1 above. And what that means is we take our answer from part 1 where we worked out x is minus 5. We put that into the original equation and we see if things work out. So let's say we work out the left hand side. That was 2 by 4 minus 3x plus 12. And that's going to turn into 2 by 4 minus 3. Instead of x, I now have minus 5, because that's what I worked it out to be in the previous part. Uh, we continue that then, so we get 2 multiplied by, this is 4 minus 3 times minus 5, and that's the same as 4 plus 15, plus a 12, so 2 by 19 plus 12, 38 plus 12, and that turns out to be 50. So now we see if the right-hand side turns out to be the same thing, and if we get 50 from this, then that verifies the answer from part 1. So let's see what we get. Uh, 7 times x becomes 7 times minus 5. Then we got a minus 5 by 2 by minus 5 minus 7. And so that's minus 35 there, minus 5. The 2 by minus 5 is minus 10, and a minus 7 is there as well. So it's minus 35 minus 5 by uh, minus 17. Minus 35, then the minus 5 by minus 17 should give me plus 85. And if you do minus 35 plus 85, 
you end up with 50. And so since the left hand side and the right hand side turn out to be the same number, that is proof that the answer for part one was correct. The very last part of question three gives us some simultaneous equations. One of them is a linear equation and the other is a, an equation of a circle. So I'm just going to label these so I can refer to them as equation one and equation two, just to, to keep things a bit briefer. Uh, the way to solve these is by substitution. Uh, you can use the, the transitive method either, but I, th I think that's a bit complicated. So let's say we go with equation one and we have to rearrange it. So you get x equals something or else y equals something. Let's say for example, x equals, it's gonna turn out to be seven minus a y because you bring the y over the equal sign or you subtract y from both sides. Then we have to substitute that into equation two. So equation two was the x squared plus y squared equals 25. Instead of x, I now have this seven minus y. And so instead of x squared, I have seven minus y and that gets squared. Then I continue with equation two. So it's a plus y squared and it equals 25. And now we just have to distribute this. So this is uh, seven by seven minus y minus y times seven minus uh, seven minus y plus y squared equals 25. So that's 49 minus seven y minus seven y plus y squared plus y squared equals 25. And then I'm going to do a bit of tidying up. So 49 minus 14y, combine the two minus sevens, and there's a y squared and a y squared, which is two y squared, and that's equal to 25. And lastly, one more little bit of cleanup, two y squared minus 14y. I'm gonna bring the 25 over, or subtract 25 from both sides, and so we end up with a plus 24. And you can't forget that there's still, at the right-hand side of the equal sign is, is still there, all that's left now is a zero. That's important that there's a zero there. And um, now notice that everything is a factor of two. So I'm actually just gonna divide everything by two. So I get y squared minus seven y plus 12 equals zero. And you'll notice that this is a quadratic equation and that's what you should end up with in this type of question when you have a linear equation and a circle equation and you're trying to solve them simultaneously you should end up with a quadratic because that's how you get two answers out of this and that's what you're meant to get. Um, so you can use whatever method you want to solve these quadratic equations. There's, uh, there's the minus B formula is, is popular. There's factorization, there's the box method. There's, there's loads of different ways to do this. I'm a fan of factorization by grouping, so let's give that a go. First of all, notice that the, there's a Y squared. That means there's one of them. And I'm gonna do a little aside over here do a little bit of extra maths on the side. I uh, take the coefficient of y squared, which is the one, and the constant, which is the 12, and I multiply them together, and I get a 12. Now I'm looking for all the factor pairs of 12. So I go one and 12, two and six, three and four. And there's also the, the minus pairs, so minus one, minus 12, minus two, minus six, and minus three, minus four. And why do I do all this? Well, I, I really want one of these pairs and the pair that I want should add to the coefficient of y. So they should add to minus seven. So if I add each of these pairs together, I get uh, 13 for the one and 12, two and six is eight, three and four is seven. Minus one and minus 12 is minus 13, minus two and minus six, minus eight. Minus three and minus four gives me minus seven. So uh, I was looking for a minus seven there and I end up with a minus seven from the, the minus three and the minus four. That, so that's the, the factor pair that I'm looking for. And so I rewrite this where instead of a minus seven y, I write these two factors. So a minus three y and a minus four y. I still have this minus 12, sorry. sorry. I still have this plus 12 trailing at the end and I still have equal zero. Now I factorize them in pairs. So between the y squared and the minus three y, there's a y that's common. 
and what's left is y minus 3. Between the next pair, the minus 4y and the 12, only a 4 is common, and I'm actually going to take out a minus 4. It's just a little trick to this that you have to remember. And when I take a minus 4 out, I'm left with a y from the minus 4y. And when I factor minus 4 from a 12, I end up with a minus 3. And now you'll notice that each of these has a y minus 3, so that's now a common factor, and I can take that out. So y minus 3 is there, and everything else goes in the other bracket. So y minus 4, and that equals 0. Now I solve these, so I get case 1, where y minus 3 equals 0. You say the first bracket equals 0, and you end up with y equals 3. And the other case, where the second bracket, y minus 4 equals 0, and you end up with y is equal to 4. And now that's not the entire question done, because we have to figure out what is x as well. And so we have this easy equation where x is 7 minus y. So we have x equals 7 minus y. If I say y is 3, as in case 1, I end up with x is 7 minus 3, which is 4. And I do the same with my other scenario. X is still 7 minus y, which is 7 minus 4 in case 2, where I said y was 4. And so x ends up being 3. And now this is the kind of question you might get in coordinate geometry as well, where these aren't just numbers, they're actually coordinates. So you would write this one, for example, as 4, 3, and you would write the second one as 3, now in this case, it, because it's just a pure algebra question, you don't actually get coordinates out of this. So I'm just going to delete them. But just for future reference, you might need to know that for a coordinate geometry question. Um, so this is the entirety of question three. Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I will talk to you again in question four.